identity that tells you that um, the matrix sigma that have a constraint that uh, you would apply by the epsilon tensor in four dimensions so you pack the same sigma and that is a property of all self dual dual is because of multiplication by epsilon multiplication by epsilon and since it gives you back sigma so that's called self dual Whereas the sigma bars are anti-sigma. Okay. Well. In the sense that they have the same relation but with the minus sign. Because, uh, so identity said uh, if you haven't uh, worked this out, it would be fun to try just to get uh, your hand free with the uh, calculations. Uh, there is a book that sometimes I hesitate to recommend because it makes a lot of calculations, but uh, if you are interested for all these things, I will mention it just in case. There's a reference. It's an old book. It's called Supersymmetries. And the authors are Miller Christian and the Vietnam. It's very old and uh, even the questions are written with a uh, contract. Uh, but uh, they go on all the details of the Galilean equations. So you want to have all the things of uh, minus signs and so on. That's a good uh, reference to, to try, just to, to, if you want to, uh, to your, your stuff is more progressive than Michael. Uh, as you saw with this uh, very detailed things, that are some, that are some uh, mistakes in the calculation. So don't trust everything you see. But it's, I think it's, uh, it's, 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 it's really quite useful, useful if you want to. Uh, to, to see how the calculations are done in this dimension of the of the point. Okay. Uh, so then we're going to continue with uh, some <coughs> product of spinners. And the uh, first is that you have the uh, Product of two spinners side to side defined to be psi alpha psi alpha in this order, which is important. <coughs> and this of course is just you lower the index this index and raise that index by using epsilon, that would be psi alpha psi alpha. Psi alpha. Similarly, for the conjugate spinners, the product is the same but following the order in the opposite direction. So now you go you contract from bottom to up. Stand here so that you will see why it's convenient to find it this way. Uh, in particular, in particular, we have uh, the product of uh, two spinners, uh, or the spinner by its itself, so psi squared. 
sine of psi, that would be, and according to this, that would be psi alpha, psi alpha, psi alpha, which is, uh, you can write this as epsilon alpha distance. Alpha theta, psi theta, psi alpha. And if we use the definition of epsilon, which is the total anti-symmetric tensor, that happens to be, uh, that will give you uh, psi 2, psi 1, minus psi 1, psi 2. Okay, so that means that the square of a spinner gives you this difference of those two terms. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, a, a one motivation to choose now this uh, numbers, this uh, spinner numbers, to be anti-commuting. If they were commuting, psi 2, psi 1 equals to psi 1, psi 2, the, the, the square of the spinner would be zero. So that's not very exciting. So we, can, we will choose the other way around. We will choose the psi 2 and uh, the psi as components as to be Grassmann numbers. So it's a convention, so that means that uh, that means that uh, psi one psi two equals to minus psi two psi one. Okay. <coughs> or in general, we can write psi alpha psi beta b and have epsilon alpha beta times. This leads to some further identities. Uh, here's And the sigma matrices, 
but you have to know what the dagger needs for a, a speaker. And for dagger, we will, we're using this, Psi alpha dagger is just Psi bar alpha dot. And also, for future use, it's good to know that Psi bar alpha dot can be obtained from the corresponding spinner <coughs> by complex conjugating and multiplying by the matrix sequence zero. So this is just a way of controlling the indices notation. Remember that sigma zero is just identity. So this is just identity times the corresponding spinner complex conjugated. And that, that really from the complex conjugation to the, to the target notation. So just that thing is point theta to alpha dot. Okay, so you use this definition, and then that will be true. Okay, so to close this, let me just write a connection to to the right spinners. Okay, so so far I, I introduced for you the two component the spinners, and they have to be related to to the more standard spinners that we deal with in quantum computing, which are the Dirac spinners. And for that, you can define the gamma mu matrices to be zero sigma mu, sigma mu bar zero. <laughs> I know the properties of the sigma mu. This implies that this gamma matrices satisfy the following parameters. So that means that the, uh, that the gamma, this gamma matrices defined in this way are a representation of the direct algebra. Subject 
the sigma mu is just the diagonal of what you mentioned is that, uh, defined by the sigmas and, and sigma bars, which are the generators of SL to C. And then, because of that property, this sigma minus are the generators of a uh, lowest group. In the sense that, since sigma and sigma bars satisfy the algebra, then the capital sigma also satisfies the algebra. From here, we define uh, the max spinner. The Rack spinner psi d, to, we define it to be the pair psi alpha chi bar alpha dot. So we combine a left handed and a right handed file spinner, and that will give you the right spinner. <coughs> so, so we can. Well, not that uh, if since gamma phi, we can apply gamma phi to this direct spinner, and that will give us minus psi alpha chi bar alpha dot. So then we can have the projector project
charge computer. So that's why essentially what, what change you particles to anti particle. That's what that's what the conjugate is. <coughs> essentially. Uh, <coughs> So we will see that, uh, for instance, if a, if a psi Dirac satisfies the Dirac equation with a positive sign for the electric charge, the psi D conjugate will satisfy the same equation with the opposite sign for the electric charge. So that would define the conjugate part of the particle. And then the last thing is the Majorana spinners. is you take a Dirac spinner and set chi alpha equals psi alpha chi alpha. That means that the Majorana spinner psi n you can write that as a psi alpha psi alpha dot. So now these two objects are the same, one is the complex of the other. <coughs> That's just so it's assigned a Majorana spinner with a reality property, so it's like a real object. And uh, in fact, psi a, you use the definition of, of the complex of the conjugate spinner that happens to be equal to its conjugate. So that's why it's, it's, it's a real object. So at any, in the same way that you, we can decompose a Dirac spinner in terms of a right-handed and left-handed violin spinners, we can also decompose any Dirac spinner in terms of a Majorana components. So we can always write a Dirac spinner to be psi Majorana 1 plus psi Two. In that regard, then the, the conjugate Dirac spinner will be minus i. And uh, so this is a process of Majorana spinner. So we have seen file Majorana and Dirac spinner. We can ask the question if there, the question if there is a spinner which is both Majorana and Val in four dimensions. But uh, this will not happen. So notice. No. No. Majorana Val. In four D. I have to say that this is four D. <coughs> That means that you want to have a spinner that is both Majorana and Vial. If it is Vial, that means that one of the one of the components is zero here. But if it is Majorana, both components are equal. So that means that they would both be zero. So there's no okay. that, that, that's, that's the thing that you cannot be both at the same time Majorana and Vial. Is that uh, clear? Yeah. What is the, is the meaning of, of the Majorana? So what is the same physical meaning of the decomposition of the Majorana? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, it's good to treat. Oh, that this is a, 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 in general, we can have some reality components of the spinner. That's an informal. But for instance, uh, in, in practice, people have, have talked about the, the, for instance, the neutrino being a, a charge-less particle can be real. It can be a Majorana. So that 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 that's kind of, I mean, it can have that kind of implication. So it's it's good to have in mind what kind of of uh, of you have. Remember that the charged objects are usually complex, but neutral objects can be real. So the, then people say, well, then the if the spin, the neutrino could be an alternate particle. Okay, so. Whereas as it's good to you pointed out that whereas the violet spinners are, are very physical because we know that the world is separated between left and right. So we know that there is difference between left and right. And you will see that the standard models, the elements of the standard model are, are definitely left and the other ones are right. 
Okay, so this is uh, the end of this <coughs> uh, I, I think this is difficult. This was difficult for me because uh, uh, for some of you, it's, this is like the end end time that you have seen this kind of things. For others, this is the first time. And for the ones that is the first time, it's very difficult. For the ones that is the fourth time, it's very boring. So I, I try to, to to make it. Uh, fast, at least to, to diminish the, the, the suffering. And, uh, but please uh, come to me. Uh, those of you who thought that it's very fast, that you missed some things, then uh, please come to me and ask me questions. Okay. So, good. So now we'll move to the next. Uh, So they, they, they wanted to put them in some order, to classify them in some way. And uh, <coughs> so SU3 was very successful. And uh, but in SU3, every single multiple of this decoupets and so on, they happened to be of the same spin. So it was uh, an octuplet of uh, mesons and so on, but uh, 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 some other variants. But they were all the different, within one multiple, they all have the same spin. So then people say, well, what about having Symmetries that mix spin. So you have in one bigger multiple that's, that puts two of those multiples together. The, 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 uh, one object with spin one, or, 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 sorry, spin zero, so on, one of the spin one half, so. And uh, 
So they were postulating bigger symmetries, like SU6, so this kind of thing. But, and, and actually, they had some uh, mixture. They were mixing, mixing spin and, and, and um, let's say, an SU3 symmetry. So uh, that was uh, the idea at that time, that they can, they can evolve symmetries that mixes the internal uh, symmetries, which were like SU spin or SU3, with the space-time symmetry, the one that gave you uh, spin. So we found multiplets for which probably because of this difference can be in multiple. So that, that was uh, what, uh, what people were doing in the 60s. So they were studying the strong interaction because there were the hydrons that were there. Now we're given the, the big multiplicity of particles. And uh, uh, so as I said, the particles were successfully classified, organized, <coughs> organized in multiples. which is what we now recognize as SU3 flavor. And the question was, can there be bigger multiples in different spins? especially with non-relativistic models, and they wanted to see if uh, this would be extended to relativistic models. However, in 1967, something very exciting happened. Do you know what happened in 1967? The Beatles came with the Sgt. Peppers. Che Guevara was killed. What else happened? Uh, my Greek died. Uh, there was this war of the six days. So Weinberg, close to us, Weinberg came up with a famous paper that defines the standard world. That was 1967. So there were a lot of things happening. And probably because of that, people didn't realize that there was this going. It's on many words. Goldman and Mandula, they have what is called as a noble theorem for this question. So they said that this was not possible. That's what that says. So, uh, and uh, the, the thing is that they try to look for the most general symmetry of, of uh, a scattering amplitudes that included uh, the space-time symmetries and internal symmetries. And they concluded that the most general <coughs> symmetry of the asymmetries that is the scattering metric that it gives you the Amplitudes and the interactions of particles were just was just simply a direct flow, boring kind of direct flow of Poincare symmetry times internal symmetry. Okay. So that means here you will have all the commutation relations between the the generators u and in the new that I mentioned before. And here you have the generators that I call the PA. Well these generators were scalars with respect to the space-time symmetry. So they, they, they essentially they will have an algebra by themselves, can be a big algebra or whatever, but uh, they will just commute with all the space-time generators. And that means that they will not be any way to mix one single multiplet things of a different spins that they will just compute with the internal symmetries. So you have as big a symmetry you want here, putting every multiplet 
everything will have, will have the same scheme. So that, that is uh, the content of the common mandula theorem. And, uh, and you could have imagined that a, a probably people have tried to, to use that as a, as a way to guide themselves to, to how to change the assumptions of the theorem and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and generalize it. However, people essentially this play no role at all this theorem for a while. So people actually probably, probably were ignorant about it, about this or they didn't care. But uh, uh, <coughs> at least it didn't have any influence in the in the of the discoveries of Pristina. This happened in 1971. 1971, um, that was an interesting year also. Uh, what happened in 1971? Um, I think he died. Did Nixon and Bad come by here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, a lot of activity regarding the Vietnam War. And uh, <clears throat> I think there was a war in India and Pakistan. And uh, so a lot of things were going on there. And, uh, and again, for us, the most important part that happened that year is that it's a work of uh, in the Soviet Union at that time. And, uh, they were just doing something, just purely as a right. Uh, and uh, what they did is just to extend it. Poincaré, algebra. To include. So that means that the Poincaré algebra that had only <coughs> vector-like and tensor-like objects, they just play with it here by the Ramon to say that they were working in a string theory. In a string theory, at that time, they were worried about uh, including uh, spinners in, 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 in the in, 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 in string theory, which happened to be a two-dimensional object, because of the uh, two-dimensional field theory, which is the worship of the string dimensional object. So they introduced spinners in two dimensions to, to uh, include them into the formulation of the string theory. And that was supersymmetric in two dimensions. So. From string theory. So it was nice to see that even from its origins, string theory has played an important role with supersymmetry and having a close relationship with both. In 1973, let's see, what happened in 1973? It was the beginning of the Watergate scandal, I think. Uh, let's see, uh, what has happened? Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. What <laughs> <laughs> happened? And uh, at that time, the bulk of an act was again in the Soviet Union. Apparently, without knowing the work of Dolph and Lichtman, they were speculating that uh, they were trying to understand why the neutrino was uh, a massless particle, or was looked like to be a massless particle at that time, and. Uh, there was a nice result in the past due to Goldstone that you would see in the, in, in the standard model course, which is uh, that uh, there are natural to, uh, massless bosons as, as the origin of the because of some symmetries that are the Goldstone bosons. 
So they were thinking that probably the, the fact that the neutrinos were massless was because of a symmetry, because of a broken symmetry. And uh, so they tried to have to see the neutrinos as most compartments. that the mass was zero. And uh, <coughs> that was a very nice idea because uh, uh, for usually in, in the standard symmetry of these coastal particles being massless, these both bosons are bosons, they're called boson bosons. And they came out, so there has to be a symmetry that implies that they have to be boson fermions, because the neutrinos are fermions. And that also was the sense that the origin of uh, they discovered not only supersymmetry but also how to break supersymmetry. Supersymmetry break. And uh, again, this is completely unrelated to the previous one. So it was, uh, it's curious to see everything so close in time, which were being unrelated. However, what we consider the real uh, beginning of supersymmetry is in 1974. 1974 is the work of West and the uh, Peter's best and Sumino. Uh, West and Sumino, they actually, I think they knew now the work of uh, Ramon de Tal, two dimensions. And they said, well, the symmetry is very beautiful, so let's see if there's something in four dimensions where we can have actually field theories with supersymmetry. So, so they, they started the supersymmetric this year. And it was actually this work of Western Sumino, a series of papers, very impressive, that actually this boosted the, the interest of uh, most of the high energy community into supersymmetry. First, just by just formal things, and then people realized that it didn't have some applications to phenomenology. That was realized several years later, in the 70s and then in the 80s, mostly. But I think uh, for most people, this is the breakthrough in the sense that this is. The paper that, or the set of papers that uh, imply that how supersymmetry could be used in effectively in, 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 in fit theories. And then they store all the beautiful properties of supersymmetry <coughs> that we will observe and we'll start discussing uh, next. I mean, I have only three minutes. Uh, I don't have that much to say to start the next uh, thing, the technical thing. So I better stop here. And, uh, uh,